Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. First, I wanted to, uh, to welcome Richard, Tanya, and Pierce here from Scaly Adventures. Thank you. Apparently, <laughs> Guthrie's already met the, the four <laughs> party, I don't know the fourth party's name there. Buddy. That's Buddy. Buddy. Uh, welcome to you, Buddy. It, it would be. Be Nick <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you hold on to him. I'll meet you directly after. Yeah. So I've already got the best snack. I'll go ahead and give them to you. <laughs> That's right. We're, we're going to use the snacks prior to the patrol dogs this time. <laughs> <laughs> be silent. So what is it that made you want to be a deputy sheriff? Well, <clears throat> I was telling you earlier, when I found I was going to be a dad, you know, my life was upside down and sideways. And I wanted to give my son and my family something that I didn't have growing up, you know, family and an adult figure to, to look up to, a good role model. And since I've been into it, I've had a chance to work at our alternative school, which is basically a school where the kids get kicked out of their school and they're court mandated to go to the school. And I was a boot camp instructor up there. I got to know a lot of local kids in the area. And then growing up, while working there, growing up, I got to see the kids out here in the street. And some of the kids I've helped out, some of them I hadn't, and the ones that got away, you know, now they're the ones that are stealing people's cars, breaking people's houses, just trying to make a quick buck. You know, now doing this, I hopefully can stop, find them, talk to them before they make the big mistake and screw the rest of their lives up. So, you know, you hear the stereotypical, I did it so I can make a difference. I did it to make a difference, not only in my life, you know, my family's life. And hopefully I can affect some younger child or even an older person from making a mistake that's going to cost them or their family members the rest of their lives. All right, question number two. So what is the most rewarding thing, what's the most rewarding part of your job? Hmm. So far, the most rewarding. I actually had to deal with a gentleman and his son who was autistic and has a lot of behavioral issues. His dad apparently has some mental health issues also. And from talking to him and his son and his now wife, the deputies that have responded out there from dealing with him over and over seem to get frustrated, or excuse me, frustrated with him just because of his mental handicap and whatnot. But I actually sat on call on this call for two and a half, three hours talking with him and his son trying to get them to come to some kind of agreement on how they're going to proceed with discipline and just dealing with each other. I mean, the father didn't even know how to play with his son. You know, they, they, did, they had next to nothing in the house as far as toys for this eight-year-old. So my wife and I, we went and bought some puzzles, you know, little cheap stuff for him to do. And I went back and checked on them and their whole mentality and the way they were approaching each other and talking to each other has changed completely. And I've not had a call back out there since. So hopefully, I think that I've touched that young man and his father just by giving that little extra bit of few minutes to talk to him. So, in your own words, if there was one way, one thing you wish you could tell the public about law enforcement and and if there was one thing you could tell the public about law enforcement officers and why you guys do what you do every day to serve the community, what would that one thing be? I'm going to steal this from, from the military police school. The actual saying is of the troops, for the troops, but I'm going to twist it and say of the people and for the people. You know, we're here to try to help our whole society and our neighborhoods you know, function and be safe for our kids to grow up. That's what I say. We awesome. are of the people for the people. Awesome. All right, guys, we just got a call. We're heading over to Honey Path to check on an animal that's been abandoned on our property. We really don't know much more than it, the caller said that the dog's been left there for a couple of days and haven't seen anybody checking up on it. So we're going to ride over there and check out this pup and see how she's doing. I see a light, I see a dog.
are you? Hey! Hey! You're a happy puppy, aren't you? You need some water, don't you? Yeah, with them having cover and a shelter there. Yeah. <coughs> relatively healthy what I'm gonna do is I'll put in a call for animal control to come out here and let them process and see what they want to do and how to handle it they may take them home with them take them to the shelter they may leave them here find out who you should here and write a citation for them but with him obviously being a relatively healthy puppy I'm gonna leave him leave to, for tonight anyway He's, he's, yeah, yeah. He's nice and so meaty. do you think that someone lives here or do you think it's abandoned? I think somebody got evicted from here. They should have me in custody. Wait before we get there. I'm not trying to come this way because I said they're heading north belt. So we need to hit Highway 20 and get them going. I'm 37, I'm 21, you're 26. Oh, you're 217, George. took off into the woods. <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> no, I was here. Try this now. Try hey, it's not real light. Ha! Thank you. Ha. Thank you. You're welcome. You have the right to speak to an attorney and to have an attorney present during any questioning. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be, one will be provided to you at the government's expense. Knowing and understanding your rights as I have explained them to you. Are you willing to answer any questions I have for you at this time? No, sir. Okay. Cinema. 